Hey guys, this video is about Valerio, who is going to be added in this weekend's summoning event starting on the 15th of September. So, I guess you want to know long and short, is she a good hero and is she worth summoning? Yes, she's actually really, really good now. So previously, she's existed for a while, of course, on the Forerunner server, and she wasn't the best in the past. So she was reworked slightly. Part of the rework was giving her this talent which grants her some attack and defense based on her health. And besides that they made some other changes, mostly incrementing the damage amounts to boost the max damage bonuses she gets. The most important thing to know is she can apply vulnerability which is really nice. It makes the enemy take 20% more damage from physical damage which is a pretty good debuff to apply. It lasts for 10 seconds as well which is pretty great. And this is, if you've seen my other damage formula videos, this is applied at the end. So this is not breaking through the enemy resistance. It's just 20% more damage at the end of the calculation, which is still very good. Aside from that, she has her ultimate, which basically grants her a crazy amount of damage. And she consumes 10% of current HP per swing. She gains stacks and the stacks still burst damage at the end based on the number of stacks. And... In my opinion, the most important part of her toolkit, beyond all this crazy damage amp going on from her talent, her ultimate, and the plunging slash and the vulnerability stack, is her passive Will of Steel. When she drops below 30% HP, she's passively restoring some HP and not a lot, but instead of actually dying, it will trigger the unyielding. So she won't actually be able to die. This is while her ultimate is active. The ultimate does last for 16 seconds. So it is a 16 seconds of unyielding where she will not die from taking damage however if she were to die from this being procced then when the end she will die so she does die at the end which is very unfortunate however what you have is an incredibly high dps fighter that can't die for 16 seconds and i don't think you can understate how ridiculous that is so previously I knew that people used her in Gear Raid 2 and she was kind of cool for handling the boulders. They hit her, she goes unyielding because you pop her ultimate before they hit and then she massacres them. And I heard some people had some success doing that. But her damage wasn't very comparable to proper Nightmare Fighters. She is a duo faction Chaos and Nightmare. But since the buffs have come out and especially this talent giving her up to 60% bonus attack, which is pretty insane. Bearing in mind her base attack is nearly 6.2k which really good base attack it's not it's not like crazy but it's pretty good so with this up to 60 percent bonus attack and that's obviously on placements so that'd be total attack bonus it's just ridiculous plus all these damage amps it's it's actually really quite potent so she is actually a really really good fighter she does crazy damage but in my opinion the thing that makes her especially scary and especially powerful is the unyielding Having someone absolutely massacring damage out for 16 seconds is just crazy. You can put her in Void Rift, you can put her in Artifact Material Raid, and where any other fighter would die, she will be alive. And she won't just be alive, she'll be alive at no HP with a 60% attack bonus, dealing like some crazy amount of damage amp, doing massive smashes from plunging slash applying vulnerability and yeah she's just going to be going to town absolutely crushing anything in her path so she is very good now she does ridiculous damage that's the long and short of it she is actually a ridiculous damage dealer that's her kit that's how she works she is really going to shine the most when you use her in a scenario where you want to get some damage out on a target preferably physical damage but your fighters are not able to tank it for whatever reason the damage coming in is just too high you ult on her just before she gets crushed and she has 16 seconds of just doing ridiculous damage so she has a very good niche there she's competing against some of the best heroes in the game the nightmare fighters are actually all really good you've got salazar arrogance abomination they're all really good heroes i mean you've even got Raph and Deimos to compete against so it's a really stacked faction that she has to contend with and I think she actually does a, a good job of that so obviously you're going to want to see how she actually functions so I'll jump over to the test server in a minute as I have a bit more free reign and I got her skills maxed there which I think is a better benchmark to use but before we do that just to quickly talk about how I would gear her well if you look at the way her things work most of her abilities are granting her bonus attack or bonus damage and I'm not sure if plunging slash counts as a normal attack but even without it what we have is 60 percent attack boost because she'll basically be on no hp with her passive activated with her ultimate and we have bonus of up to 120 percent damage so most of her damage is coming from basic attacks and from the occasional plunging slash procs so these do have a three second cooldown so i do think she is 
best off in the Infernal Raw set. The Infernal Raw set is granting a 40% damage bonus to all of her attacks that are basic attacks or count as a basic attack, so I think it's the perfect set for her. Besides that, you could try to use the Soulbound Arcana, but you don't really want to ult on her too often in Guild Boss, for example, because you, you need to line the ults up so she doesn't die. So we'll get into that later. But I actually think Ageless Wrath could be one of the best sets for her. I haven't had a chance to test this because I don't have many good sets lying around. But the reason for this is, okay, so the damage formula is attack, reduced by defense, and then the net amount after the defense reductions, that is then multiplied by crit damage and by damage bonus. You want to level out your crit damage and your damage bonuses because they're, you know, they're interchangeable. If you times one number by the other, then the inverse is the same result. So she has 120% bonus from her ultimate and she has plunging slashes doing massive bonuses. So I think she might actually scale better on crit damage for once, which we don't see too many heroes scaling that well on crit damage, but I think she's actually one of the heroes where you may want to build excess crit damage on her because she's gaining 60% attack from her passive, her talent, and then she's gaining 120% damage from her ultimate. So the missing piece is crit damage at that point. This is Furycraft. I haven't tested it, but I, I do think it will actually work out that way. I would strongly suggest trying to pick up crit damage on her because I think it would actually be very beneficial. I would probably gear her two attack and one crit damage, but for the purpose of guild boss, I would be very strongly considering two crit damage and one attack, especially if your Dolores is ulting with every single one of her ultimates, which I think you probably would be. I would definitely be going for Infernal Roar or Ageless Wrath. I think they would have the best results. I haven't been able to test this extensively yet, so let me know if you found something different, but I do believe these two are going to be the best sets for her. Otherwise, the rest of the gearing is going to be kind of standard for a fighter. Night Terror is going to be great. Obviously, Soulbound Arcana is going to be good if you can get more than a few ults in, so it'll be good in Guild Boss over time. Wisdom will be pretty good. It lasts for 10 seconds, or ult lasts for 16 seconds, so that actually lines up pretty good as well. Most standard DPS sets will be great. For the Gear Aid 1 sets, of course, Warlord is going to be the best. And then, aside from that, it's anyone's game, really. All three of these are actually pretty valuable for once because even Annihilating Might, the crit damage might scale better on her due to all of the damage amps she's getting already. So that's loosely how I would gear her. So to quickly go over the artifacts for her, Scarlet Hunt is going to be the most reliable artifact damage source in Guild Boss if you have a good Salazar with her. Otherwise, Crystal of Vileness is actually really good and could arguably be better as she's boosting her stats by so much. Crystal of Vileness works better with, like, transform type heroes her ult amps her her talent amps her attack so that's really good but let's not forget she has her own special artifact bones of savagery and if you look bones of savagery increases her crit damage and i think the devs know what they're doing with this one i think it is what i mentioned earlier the fact that she's already getting loads of attack bonus and she's getting loads of damage amp from her ultimate crit damage is the missing piece there so i think that's why bones of savagery focuses on crit damage to help fulfill all three of the key ingredients so yeah i think that makes sense obviously getting the stacks of these to upgrade it further is going to be quite tough as an exclusive artifact but i think if you can it would actually be quite good so yeah i would probably focus on crystal of vileness scarlet hunt and maybe bones of savagery if you can get the copies aside from that she would actually be really quite good in the ragnarok artifact you can get from the guild shop as well as from the storyline quest because she will frequently be low on health and it grants crit damage as well so the ragnarok could be quite good to use on her as for her awakenings because we didn't go over that quite yet her first awakening grants bonus attack speed during her ult of 100 which is pretty good and it's one of the few things she's not boosting she's boosting just about everything else so that's great her second awakening is bonus attack which is nice the third gives her 20 percent defense ignore this is pretty big. So just so you know, in Nightmare 4 of the Guild Boss, this is equivalent to granting her 1100 more flat attack, just roughly based on the enemy's flat resistance amount. It's basically giving her just over a thousand attack. But if they do introduce more gear raids in future that have really high enemy resistances where you might need to use fighters or other physical damage types, then she's going to be insane in that content at Awakened 3. So I think the Awakening 3 could be really good for future content just to flat have a defense ignore is crazy. Awakening 4 is crit rate, so another piece that she doesn't have upgraded. So Awakening 4, she has bonuses for basically everything. And at Awaken 5, during her ultimate, she can get two more stacks. So she'll be doing even more damage when her ultimate expires. Anyway, that's uh, pretty much everything we can go over with the build, the gearing, and everything about her. So let's actually get to some gameplay, and I'll show you how good she is and the damage she can do. So I'm going to jump over to the test server, as I have more resources to use there. Okay, so this is the test server. 
And let me show you the Valeria I've been using and testing. So this is obviously gear that is not attainable for most people. She's obviously like four out of five ancient pieces rocking the Infernal Raw set. And yeah, I just wanted to show the ceiling of, of what she's really capable of. She's in free lots of attack bonus gear. I would actually like one of these to be crit damage, but I don't have a spare good Infernal Raw piece with crit damage on it. So this is what we've got. But because of that, I use the Annihilating Might to compensate. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't have crit damage on the chest piece. So yeah, I'm lower on crit damage than I wanted to be. But otherwise, it's a pretty good set. Loads of attack, some great attack speed, near 100% crit rate. And for the artifact, I've been using Crystal of Vileness. That way I can use it without relying on Salazar for the Scarlet Hunt. So that's the way I've geared her. She is max skill on this server. I did not awaken her yet as I wanted to get a good baseline test without awakenings. So let's show where we can use her. This is obviously a stacked team I'm using. It's not great though. Just so you know, the gear is not great on most of these heroes. I have Torador and Araka, so I'm not running an Infernal team. The reason for it is I was just too lazy to set one up and to get the timings working with Zilla 2. It's a bit more hassle than just using a Piercer team. So I just decided to use a Piercer team with a Nightmare team. So for my deployed fighters, it means I can use Salazar, Arrogance, and Valeria. And for my ranged heroes, I can use, of course, Silas, probably the best ranged DPS in the game. Hex and Sargak with Elowin and Dolores for support. So Sargak is not performing very well, to be fair. It is an A3 Salazar for the bleed up time. It is an A5 Silas because I have a couple of copies and I was just making it easier for myself to clear gear raid free and this is an a0 hex so i won't go over their gear too much i'll just quickly show you so you can get a comparison actually so silas is in an infernal raw set as well but this piece is crit rate so he is not in great gear but it's not horrendous it's actually reasonable hex is in a broken set um, but it's in pretty good stats near 100 crit rate a bunch of crit damage good enough attack salazar is in a wisdom set which i'm not sure is great for him to be honest his attack is a bit low his crit is a bit low his attack bonus is pretty good though so yeah not the best set but it's okay it's working for now um i would like it to be better so i can have better results arrogance is in a pretty good set but it is broken, unfortunately. I do want to get him in Soulbound Arcana when I can, so I'm most of the way there. Reasonable attack speed, not great. Decent attack, good enough crit damage. It's okay overall, but yeah, for, unfortunately, it's not a set. So the main competition for him is going to be Silas. Silas is A5. Silas has a Infernal Raw set, and it's mostly good gear other than the unfortunate crit rate bangle over there. So Valeria is definitely better geared, but not massively different. And she is not awakened at all, whereas Silas is A5. And Silas is a really good benchmark hero. But this, this isn't perfect placements or timings. I'll just show you the auto run and I'll explain how I use Valeria in Guild Boss. Because I do think she's actually a very good Guild Boss hero. So she has the Crystal of Vileness at the moment. She doesn't have the Scarlet Hunt on. We do have an A3 Salazar, so there should be good enough bleed up time. So everyone goes down. I've placed her on the outside on the right, as you can see here. So she's not in Elowin's healing range, and that's intentional. It's good because we want her to be low on health most of the time. We want her to be basically on the brink of dying so that she maximizes her talent and she's gaining up to 60% attack bonus when she's below like 30% HP. So when I ult at this point, it's because Infernal Roar hits and she's just sitting in her ult for most of that on low health and then comes out of it on low health. We have a Wood Elf healing her again. And then now we have a meteorite impact burning and we can ult with Dolores and her health will drop down quite low while most of the ult is in effect. But again, it's not perfect timing. I think really, if you're going to use Valeria in Guild Boss, you want to try to maximize her health being as low as you can or at least being around 30% or less. And you want to definitely be ultimating when she's on the lower end of her health threshold. So like now it's perfect. She's sitting on a very low health amount throughout her entire ultimate, which is exactly what we want. And I, I remember in this auto, I do mess up her ult at the end and she does die. Because if she takes fatal damage during her ultimate, she doesn't die because of the unyielding passive, but she dies at the end when it when the ult expires. So right now you can see she gets hit by the meteorite, drops to no HP, the ult ends and then she dies. So it's that's a mess up from me there. But it's only the last 8 seconds that are missed. Or 7 seconds even, even because the boss runs early. But yeah that's the run. You can see it was obviously pretty quick. But I just wanted to show you my quick testing yesterday. And you can see comparatively how she performed. And 
she did pretty good, as you can see. She broke 60 million damage, 51 million on Silas. Again, this is not perfect. The gear is not great on Silas. It's good, but it's not great with a crit rate bangle. My timings aren't great. I was just kind of playing about for a quick run. So yeah, there's a, there's a bunch more that can be optimized. But yeah, you get an idea for how it runs. And generally, I would say she did a pretty good job. 60 million damage is really good. So I do think she's great in guild boss. That's with a nightmare team. I wouldn't run a chaos team just because it's not overall. It's not going to be as good as a nightmare team in guild boss because you get the bleed from Salazar, which is really nice. So where else can we use her? Well, I think she's really good in artifact material raid. You can. So this is power of dominance turned off. You can use a slightly less stacked team than this. I was messing about. Let me show you actually quite quickly. I was trying to find a, how good she is in an auto run. And this is a pretty speedy team I came up with. This is Garn. So this is not uh, attainable by anyone. But it's cool to see her potential. So she's tanking the boss. Silas for DPS. Salazar for bleed. Two hits and she's most of her health gone. She ults so that she's got her invulnerability state up and then they just butcher the boss together and it's such a fast run you saw the portals didn't even appear that's how quick the enemy died and you might be thinking well there's there's silas and there was salazar but it was mostly valeria that did the damage five million damage she pumped out by herself and she had plenty of time left on her ultimate if you'd watch this again she could have probably handled most of that by herself in that ultimate window she does have garn boosting her damage by a crazy amount but I mean, look at that. That's like a quarter, maybe nearly even a third of her ultimate remaining. So she was absolutely killing it. So Valeria is, of course, insane in Artifact Material Raid. Either you can get her to tank the boss for a fairly limited window. That won't work without really good gear. But I mean, hey, it's a very, very fast run if you've got the gear to make that work. If you want to get a really speedy team going, she's fantastic. If you don't, you don't have to throw her at the boss, but you can use her on the side as a DPS. And a lot of people struggle because their DPS get killed by Salazar's ultimate. When he does slashing blitz, it blows up the fighters around him. Well, he does have a, a forecast. He throws his hands in the air. He summons adds. And then a few seconds later, he does the slashing blitz. That seems to be the pattern. So you can just save her ultimate until that appears. And then you can use her ult to keep her alive for a bit longer. And then, yeah, you can just keep her alive and get massive amounts of damage out on the boss. So I think she's fantastic for Artifact Material Raid. So where else can you use her? There's actually a bunch of places. You might think at first she's just a guild boss hero, but obviously she's top tier in Artifact Material Raid now. So much damage. And you can even use her in Gear Raid too. So if we turn off Power of Dominance and we take a team something like this, so it's obviously is not going to work, but I just want to show you she has some pretty cool uses that I think would actually help massively so we can track her down at the start over here. Her rage comes up pretty quick, actually. It doesn't take long for her ult to, active, to activate. So now we've got these guys come along and they do hit like trucks. So we'll just ult off the bat. And now that first one just died instantly. The second one comes, her ult's still active. She just massacred it. She just killed it. We've got a Valeria still. She didn't die to the first two. She killed them both by herself. And we can just despawn her. So she's really good at handling the first wave because her ult lasts long enough to handle both enemies. And at the end as well, you can chuck her down to block the boss because she's going to survive the entire time, right? So we've got the boss in Gear Raid 2 in stage 21. So this is obviously not the real scenario, but just to show you that she can actually tank it. So now the boss is on her. She's ultimated. She's not getting hit by the boss rule. She's not dying at least. And she's holding her ground and absolutely chunking the boss's health out. Obviously she dies at the end. But look at the amount of damage she did there. It's crazy. So yeah, it's just another little thing in her toolkit that gives her an interesting ability. She can hold her own for quite some time and get a massive amount of damage out. So I do really quite like her for general content as a fighter. If you need someone who can really hold their ground and deal some massive damage, I think she is a great option. So where else could you use her? Well, Gear Raid 1 is not going to be her specialty as she does physical damage. Gear Raid 3, she can't hit them because they're flying. Artifact, we shown she was fantastic. You could use her in the resource raids, I guess, for some damage, but it doesn't matter. Promotion maids don't matter. Faction trial, sure, she'll be great in Nightmare, and she should be decent in the basic trial. But predominantly, I would say she is a guild boss and an artifact material raid hero, as well as a void rift hero. I think anywhere where you need bursty damage and you can benefit from having a massive damage dealer have a long survivability window, Valeria is going to be incredibly good. So yeah, I do recommend her. I do think she is actually really good. I, I think they did a good job buffing her and I think they may have even over buffed her, to be honest. The main tips for using Valeria is to try to take advantage of this talent. 
juggle her health if possible, keep her lower on health to maximize this benefit, even as part of a nightmare team and not a chaos team. 60% bonus attack is just ridiculous. It's so much damage. That's it for the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions or experiences with her that you think might help other people. As always, thank you very much. Have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.